Okay, so I'm going to show you how to upgrade your computer uh, hard drive um, to an SSD, or if you want, just increase the capacity. Um, so there's uh, this type of SSD, which is a SATA 2.5 inch. Um, desktops will use the same. They don't have a 3.5 inch um, SATA SSD, but they do have adapters just to make it fit if you want to mount it properly. Um, but usually since it's SSD, um, it doesn't matter if it shakes around and in desktops, you're not really moving it around. So, um, depending on how the case is designed, a lot of times I just leave it hanging with the connectors holding it and it's fine. Um, so yeah, this is a regular SATA SSD. Um, a lot of computers will have these newer ones will have the M.2 NVMe SSD. These have a higher performance. Um, but there's also an M.2 SATA SSD, which has two notches in it. They'll have, like, different lengths. I believe this will also have different lengths. So make sure um, your computer um, check what size your SSD is and what type. Um, most M.2 NVMe slots will support the SATA SSDs, but they're slower. So try and stick with the NVMe if you can. These are The NVMe's are faster. Okay, they're also sometimes called PCIe, I believe. Um, and then there's MSATA, which is not as common. Older computers will have it. They had this before they started using the M.2s. Um, so same thing with the MSATA. They'll have like half lengths as well. This one's the full length card. Okay, so once you um, make sure what type of SSD you have, um, actually Apple has their own type of SSD. Um, so make sure um, any model, I believe late 2016 or 2017 they soldered in they started soldering in the ssds i think all the macs after that they probably soldered in as well so you can't upgrade the ssd anymore unless you change the whole logic board but for the macbooks i believe 2013 till 2015 possibly 2016 um they'll have uh their own ssd if you have um what you want you can get a m.2 nvme and then you can use one of these kind of adapters. So all you do is go on Amazon, search M.2 MacBook or adapter, M.2 adapter, and you'll find these. They're pretty cheap. You can find them for like 7 bucks or something. Some cost more. Um, but yeah, pretty much this converts the slot for the MacBook to a M.2 NVMe slot. So make sure um, if you want to upgrade your MacBook's memory, make sure to get an NVMe one with the one notch, okay? Um, and if you're upgrading a MacBook, it's different. Um, so for MacBooks, what you want to do is connect an external um, external USB um, hard drive or whatever is enough to store how much memory you have on your computer. And then just run Time Machine um, and it'll create a backup for you. Once you create the Time Machine backup, you can swap the hard drive out with the new SSD or the, the other SSD with the higher capacity SSD. Um, and then um, so when you start your MacBook up, hold the Option key and you can actually boot from the Time Machine backup to run the installer. Um, in order to do the upgrade with the M.2 NVMe and the adapter for MacBooks, you have to be running High Sierra... Or, or later. So High Sierra, El Capitan, not El Capitan, sorry, High Sierra, Mojave, or um, the latest one, Catalina, that just came out. And the drive will need to be format formatted with the newer um, APFS or AFPS, whatever it's called. Okay, so that's how you would do it on a Mac. Um, for PCs, um, you would use this software. So I found this is the best um, software so far that I've been using that's free. So Macrium Reflect Free. So you just go to this website, macrium.com slash reflect free. Um, click on the home use since you're not using it for your business. Okay, after you do that, just continue. Okay, so it'll download. I just save it to my desktop because it's easy to find and easy to delete afterwards. So save it. Go to your downloads. You can just run it. Or if you want, you can go to your downloads. Okay, and then double click this. All right. Once that comes up, it'll show you it's the free version. Um, just change this um, to desktop so it's easy to find like before. Okay, and you can leave this checked so that way it'll install once you finish downloading. So click download here. It'll go. Okay. 
So as you see, it created a new folder here, and that's where the installer is. Okay, I don't really need it to log the installation stuff, so I uncheck that, and then just click Next. Okay, click Next. I accept. All right, click Next again. Home version. Okay, click Next. I don't need to register it, and then just click Next. All right, the desktop shortcut so it's easier to get to, and then install. So this will install. So once you get the SSD, um, what you want is a way to connect it to your computer so you can have your internal drive and your new drive connected at the same time. So I got this to connect SATA drives. So for M.2s and stuff, you'll need a special adapter. So those can be kind of expensive. Um, the regular M.2, make sure you get the right one because an M.2 will use a different um, USB adapter than an M.2 NVMe. So make sure you make sure it supports the SATA or NVMe, okay? Um, but yeah, basically you'll need that so that way you can just connect your um, hard drive to the computer um, so you have both connected. Um, if you have a desktop, you can pro you'll have multiple, like, ways to connect more than one SSD or hard drive. Um, some laptops will have two, so you might not need an adapter, but um, it just depends how your computer's built. All right, so after that, it says launch now. I'll click finish. So if you didn't connect the SSD already, it's not gonna show up yet. So right now you only see my main hard drive. So now if I connect the SSD, then you can refresh this and it'll find the SSD. So this actually already has stuff on it, so it's still finding it, there we go. Okay, so you click refresh there. So now you can see your hard drive. Normally you'd want like this a similar capacity SSD um, or larger. Um, that'll make the job a lot easier, um, but you'll still have to mess with the partitions. So what I found uh, the best way um, if you're going to a smaller drive, you'll see like the C drive or the Windows partition here. Um, everything that comes after that, I don't copy that over, so I uncheck it. Normally the stuff that comes after is like recovery stuff or um, uh, OEM, like factory recovery partitions. So you don't really need those unless your computer's breaking or something. Um, so you can actually keep your old hard drive as a backup if you if you feel like you'll need that recovery, but most likely you'll never need that. Um, I'll show you um, in a little bit how you can get to the recovery in Windows 10 without having like the regular factory recovery stuff. Um, and I'll actually make another video because for Windows 10, um, you can actually create a free uh, Windows 10 like reinstallation media from Microsoft. So I'll show you how to do that as well in another video. So. That one I'll have up probably in a day or two. So, okay, once you do that, once you uncheck all the partitions that come after the Windows partition, um, you'll see that when you're on this one, it shows clone disk here. But if I go to the second drive I put, it'll show clone disk here. So if your SSD or your drive you're upgrading to already has data on it, um, there's some extra steps that I'll show you. Um, but yeah, once you do that, um, it's not going to... It's not going to let me put it on this drive because there's only 200 gigs and I'm using more than 200 gigs here. So just to show an example, I'm going to uncheck this just to show you how it will look. Um, but basically, it'll resize this last partition on its own to fit the size of the, the disk. Um, but this has too much stuff, so I'm not going to do that for now, um, just to show you. So make sure that when you click the clone disk that it's on the correct disk. So this is my internal drive. And then this is the the new drive that I would be cloning to. So make sure that you're cloning, you're clicking the clone on the right one. If you click the one down here, then it's going to clone this to whatever drive you select. So if I click clone disk here, okay, it'll pop up like this. It'll ask you what hard drive you want to clone to. Sorry, the thing's focusing weird. So I'll select that one. Normally, it'll show up um, as gray like this if your drive is blank. Okay. But since it had data, I had to delete the partition, so now it's blank. Um, it doesn't delete it until you actually start the process. So the data, this thing is kind of smart. So if you click Next, Next, um, and then you just tell it Finish, so it'll ask you to start the clone. So I don't save this backup schedule thing. I just run the backup now. 
So if you say okay, if there was data on on your on your old on the new drive that you're doing, it'll tell you here that all the stuff is going to be overwritten, and you can't even click continue unless you click the check mark. See, so I can't do it. So you would click the check mark, and then you would say continue, and it'll basically wipe your whole drive. If there's stuff on this, it'll wipe it out. So make sure you select the right one because if you select the wrong drive and then you click the check mark, it's going to wipe out your drive. So after you start it, you'll see the progress here. Um, so the progress is like the entire disk clone progress. And then the current progress is just the partition it's currently working on. So once it's done, um, it'll pop up a message that says it's complete. You can close it and then shut down your computer and swap the hard drive out and boot it up and it'll work. Um, if your computer has like all these partitions and you want to keep all of these extra partitions, if you're using a larger hard drive and it can fit everything, or if you're using a smaller hard drive, um, what you'll need to do is there's, you'll need a software to manage the partitions. Um, I use a software called Parted Magic. It basically boots like a Linux thing that has all these utilities to manage hard drive partitions. And basically what you'll want to do is move all the free space so that it's unallocated. And then you can actually move the partitions behind the unallocated memory. So that way when you check all the partitions, um, all the extra space won't be trying to clone onto the, the new drive. Um, and then after you do that, you can go back into Parted Magic if you want, move all the partitions back over, and then extend back out the the memory into the unallocated memory. So if you're upgrading to a larger hard drive, um, sometimes it doesn't actually automatically pull the extra empty memory here into the, um, the main partition. Um, so to fix that, what you want to do is you go to the start menu and then you just type uh, disk mgmt.msc. Let's see. Okay. And then just go to that, press enter. All right, so once you get there, it'll basically show this, and then at the end, instead of blue, it'll be black, this bar, and it'll say unallocated. So to add that to your Windows partition, um, the unallocated memory needs to be right next to it. So if you added other partitions and the unallocated comes after it, you're not going to be able to do it. You're going to have to like remove the extra partitions here. Okay, so the unallocated memory needs to be right next to it. So after you do that, you can right click. It'll have this extend volume button. You just do that and then just go through the thing, say next, okay. It'll automatically select how much memory to pull. Um, so I'll show you an example with the shrinking one. It's basically the same thing. It just shrinks the memory and turns the extra into unallocated instead. So I'll show you what that looks like. So it looks like this. It'll just say that and then you'll click, I think it either says extend or next and it'll automatically do it for you. The box actually might look different. I think it shows like a little box here and a box here showing how much you want to move where. But um, pretty much it'll do that, okay? So that's how you do it if the memory doesn't show up right. Um, let's see, am I missing anything? So clone it, okay, get the right SSD, use the software, get an adapter clone it and that's pretty much it um, I'll show you what the parted magic thing looks like just in case you want to use that um, that one's a paid software so let's see so you go to the the website partedmagic.com so you go here and then they give you the options you can download it all right so here you go it's pretty cheap it's not too bad it's cheaper than bringing your computer to somebody else to do it so 11 bucks, you'll need a USB drive to do it, and yeah. So you can use this software to manage partitions. If you need a video of that, just let me know. I can make one later. But um, yeah, usually it's pretty straightforward. But if it's if you don't if you're not able to figure it out, just let me know. So that's pretty much it. Um, you can use this Macrium Reflex software. Okay. Um, this is for Windows computers. For um. And you can use this software, I think, on Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10, probably Windows XP. I don't know if you're using that or Windows Vista. But, um, yeah, 
Um, you can do that with all those versions of Windows. And for Macs, remember, use um, Time Machine backup with a, another hard drive first, and then you can swap out the hard, um, the hard drive or the SSD, and then just run the Time Machine backup by holding the Option or Alt key and load the Time Machine backup onto the new SSD. Um, if you're using the adapter with NVMe for the MacBook, make sure your SSD is formatted to APFS or AFPS, whatever it's called. Um, otherwise, it won't work. Okay, and that's pretty much it. If this helped you, um, please like and leave a comment below if you have any questions. Um, and yeah, if it helped, help me out um, by subscribing. And thanks for watching. Bye.